watch this video until the end. Anyway, if you missed the previous videos around here, I basically challenged you to figure out what this part is. I revealed what this is a week later or so, and then I think it's time to do a more in-depth follow-up about this, because these are really, really, really interesting. So in this video, we'll dive into the fascinating world of cell scenes. We'll break down how they work, explore their applications and demonstrate them in action. Let's get started. So what is a cell scene? Cell scenes, also known as synchros, are rotary devices used to transmit angular position between two or more locations. They rely on electromagnetic principles to synchronize the location of one unit with another. Here's what a cell scene looks like. Inside there's a rotor and a stator with multiple windings. When the rotor of one cell scene moves, it generates voltages in its stator that control the rotor of a connected cell scene, ensuring they remain in sync. In order for this to work, we need to power the rotor using an AC voltage. In this case, it's a 50 volt, 50 hertz input that needs to be applied between X and Y. And the key detail about this is that the rotor induces a voltage into three windings that are 100 degrees apart from one another, which have the terminals here denoted with one, two and three. Now, since the rotor is free to spin inside the stator, the voltages observed on the stator depend on how well the rotor aligns with each of these windings. So basically, for every single position of this shaft, we get a unique combination of voltages between the terminals 1, 2 and 3. And strangely enough, if we get this combination of voltages and apply it to different identical unit, the second unit will align its shaft to the position of this shaft, which is really fascinating in my opinion. So, based on what you want to achieve, there are multiple types of synchros or cell scenes. The encoder or the sensor, if you will, is called a synchro transmitter, like this one. And then you would pair this with what is called a resolver, which is a device that aligns itself to the transmitter. Now let's do some step-by-step -step experiments that build up to the idea of synchronized synchros. And the first concept we need to talk about is inductive coupling. You probably know about inductive coupling from your basic physics classes, Faraday's law and whatnot. And there are countless animations online about this. However, I'm more of a hands-on guy, so let's see Faraday's law in action. What Faraday's law describes is that the induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. And an easy way to see this in action is this experiment that we have right here. So here we have a small inductor connected to an oscilloscope, and we have a signal generator producing a 1 MHz sine wave that is connected to an identical inductor. So this powered inductor produces a changing magnetic field that can be coupled into another inductor, like so. As expected, we get an induced sine wave, however, you can notice that some factors influence the amplitude that we see on the oscilloscope. And those factors are basically the distance between the two inductors and also the angle between the two inductors, which is exactly what the cell scene uses in order to work. So, inductive coupling is highly sensitive on the angle between the two inductors. So, when the inductors are perfectly aligned or there is zero degrees between them, we get the maximum coupling and as we increase the angle, we get less and less coupling until they are perpendicular and we get basically zero coupling. So, you can imagine that this is the rotor of a cell scene and this is one of the stator windings. So, this experiment shows that the coupling between the two inductors is proportional to the cosine of the angle between them. However, uh, this doesn't give us enough information to tell where the rotor is. And that's because, in theory, this inductor could be like so, or like so, and you would get the same thing. And also, it could be perpendicular, but this way or this way, and in theory, you get zero volts at the output. 
which implies that we don't have enough information using a single stator winding. And that's why cell scenes have multiple such windings. The simplest ones probably have just two of them, which are 90 degrees apart. And then you get a sine of x and a cosine of x signal. And with those two signals, you can actually identify where the rotor is. However, in our case, we have three such windings that are 120 degrees apart from each other. And this is what most cell scenes do. And now keeping in mind our inductive coupling experiment, we can take things a step further by visualizing the voltages produced by a cell scene. And to do this, I have a really old school setup that you'll probably enjoy if you're into old school things as well. So what I decided to do is to connect some light bulbs at the outputs of the cell scene. So every single winding on the stator gets its own light bulb in order to see how the voltages change as we rotate the shaft. So let's give this a try. Now we have to turn on the transformer and we have two lights. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's turn the shaft. Look at that. Damn, that's amazing. I think this is the most beautiful representation of what a synchro does. Just look at this. Now we have maximum alignment with this winding. We can tweak it so that we get maximum alignment with this one. And we can turn it just a little bit more and now we are perfectly aligned to this one. And we can turn it and we can see how the rotor changes the induced voltages in our three windings. As a side note, something really interesting happens if you start removing light bulbs. So look at this. Now, if I remove this one, all of a sudden, this one doesn't turn as easy as before. And now I can feel some resistance here, which is really interesting. So look, the synchro now really wants to be in one position or another. So if you create an imbalance between the voltages, then you feel some resistance here and it suddenly has a preference. So it prefers to stay aligned so that both light bulbs are equally lit, which is really interesting. And this is interesting because with all three light bulbs in place, you don't feel any sort of resistance when rotating the shaft. So let's remove one more and see what happens. Now only one of the windings is loaded and we can do the same thing. And now we get something similar. So this one has a huge resistance once I rotate it. And it really prefers to stay in a position where the light bulb is completely dim. So I can force it so that it aligns with the stator winding and it turns on the light. But as soon as I release it, it stays in a position where it doesn't power the light at all which is really interesting and this leads to the idea that the transmitter also works as a resolver and vice versa. So even though one device is optimized for doing one thing, in essence, it doesn't matter which device you rotate and which one gets to be the actuator. And of course, no void electronics video would be complete without intensive, unnecessary use of the oscilloscope. So here's the same thing on the oscilloscope. Uh, the third channel here is generated by a math channel because I don't have a differential probe and I don't have a simple way to, to monitor all three voltages at the same time. So here it is. You can sort of see that um, the same thing is happening here. However, this is a pretty inconvenient representation of what's going on in my opinion. So a slightly better way to see this is to maybe slow down the time base a lot. 
However, this takes really long for a single acquisition, so yeah. Let's spin the shaft just a little bit and see how the signals vary. Okay, so you can sort of see that the signals are 120 degrees out of phase here based on where the peaks happen. The purple one is the first channel to peak, then the white one is the second one to peak and then it's followed by a peak on the yellow one. So they are 100 degrees out of phase, sort of. And another interesting way to see this is to use the rolling mode and slow it down maybe even more. Let's rotate the shaft and you can sort of see what's going on but an annoying thing about this oscilloscope is that the math channel doesn't work in the rolling mode which is stupid so here it is now we spin it really fast and if we go really slow you can see what's going on sparkling water ASM And now let's finally prepare the synchros to do their magic. So in order to do this you just need a straight connection. Which means that the X terminal from here goes to the X terminal from here. Y to Y, 1 to 1, 2 to 2 and 3 to 3. So nothing special here. And then you just need to power up the rotors from the same power supply of course. That's why they are hooked up together. So for this we just need a 50 Hz 50 volt power supply however I decided to use just 24 volts for this. In my case the power comes from a variac however this is a really special variac because it's isolated. So this is not an auto transformer this is a proper two winding transformer. So let's power them up and see what we get. Ready? 3, 2, 1, fire! So as you can see they jumped into sync basically and now if you rotate one of them the other one turns exactly the same and this works both ways so you can spin this one and the other one spins exactly the same so they will keep the same position no matter what assuming that they have power And there are no tricks here so we can remove the power and they no longer work as you can see. And interestingly enough they get really unhappy if you block one of them and force the other one. So look at the current consumption here. This one is blocked and as you force them out of sync you get pretty high currents through them. So this is almost 2 amps. At this point you're probably wondering what sort of applications do synchros have. Well, they are used for transmitting angular information in anything from airplanes to ships to tanks and so on. And they work really well in safety critical applications. However, I think they are mostly obsolete by now and they are replaced by optical encoders and things like that. But just for fun, let's replicate something that you would do inside an airplane. So let's say that you need a cockpit instrument that needs to display the engine temperature. However, the engine is obviously really far away and you want a really reliable way to transmit the position of a thermometer all the way to the cockpit using electrical wires. So let's say this is the sensor and this is the instrument in the cockpit. So the first thing that you need to do is of course to provide a scale for this. So yeah, this is a really improvised scale but you get the point let's put it here and now as the actual sensor inside the engine moves you get an indication of the temperature inside the cockpit and basically all the analog instruments work this way and if you're curious to watch them in action there are many channels on YouTube that demonstrate just that. One of my favorite being Le Labo de Michel. So I will link this in the description of this video and make sure to check out his channel as well. He has some really interesting stuff going on there. 
interestingly enough even flight controls used to work this way so so imagine this is connected to a lever inside the cockpit you can easily transmit information to an actuator and if the actuator is not powerful enough let's say you want to move something that is really heavy or hard to turn then you can put this thing inside the feedback loop and then using an external motor that's far more powerful than this one you can drive something huge using close to no physical effort so that's about it i guess please let me know if you found anything new in this video and i would also like to know if you got the chance to work with synchros at work so if you have any nice stories about them please let me know in the comments so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way that's it for now bye